In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about design of singly reinforced concrete beams. But before that, I will spend some time on simple properties of concrete. Designing a simple concrete beam is extremely important for undergrad students and for young engineers as well. This is how the lecture is organized. First introduction to concrete. For concrete, we will be using Eurocode 2. And for steel, we used Eurocode 3. And I will be mainly focused on the design of singly reinforced concrete beam. Now, what does it mean by singly reinforced concrete beam? Any concrete beam will have this cage that you see over here. These bottom bars that you see, these are tension bars. So whenever we are applying loading on a beam, on a simply supported beam, the bottom is always going to be in tension. The top is always going to be in compression. If a beam is fixed, then certainly at fixed supports, you will have some kind of hogging moments. And in the middle portion, you will have sagging moments. But here, we are only talking about sagging moments, which means that if you imagine a ruler on your two fingers, and if you are applying some kind of uniformly distributed load or a point load, the beam is going to deflect down. That will lead to tension at the bottom and compression at the top. But concrete as a material is very weak in tension and very strong in compression. And I will come into these details a little bit later. But what we are talking about today is design of a beam which has these tensile bars at its bottom. So we have these tensile bars and at the top you can see these are compression bars or sometimes they are termed as hanger bars as well. And then you have these rings. These rings are termed as stirrups or shear reinforcements. This is how we provide reinforcement inside a concrete beam. Hey so friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London University. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. So introduction, firstly, Eurocode 2 part 1 and this is part 1 1 which is general rules and rules for buildings. Now these are all useful documents, concise Eurocode 2, worked examples to Eurocode 2 but even if you follow up my lecture notes you will be fine. Concrete structures. Concrete is one of the oldest material and it's been used for quite a long time now and the reliability has increased over years with a lot of research being done in past 50 60 years now people are really confident about this material it provides really good stiffness and it is relatively durable material and it is very strong in compression and more importantly it is readily available across the world i mean if you talk about steel then steel structures are not very common in a lot of asian countries so reinforced concrete is really very common even the houses are constructed from reinforced concrete the application of the reinforced concrete could be pretty much anywhere starting from buildings bridges dams and even roads as well so we have reinforced concrete roads which are really very strong as i mentioned already concrete is one of the most commonly used building materials it has got quite variety it can be mixed into any spatial shape and virtually you can create any imagination with this material so advantages of concrete i mean firstly it could be cast in any shape secondly it's relatively cheaper than other materials and relatively durable as well as long as you're not using it in alkaline environment fire resistant fire resistance is even better than steel energy efficient it's relatively energy efficient as compared to other materials on-site fabrication so you use it on site now one of the main disadvantage of this material which i believe is low tensile strength which means that for a typical concrete we normally use 30 newton per millimeter square strength and compressive strength and its tensile strength is normally 10 percent of its compressive strength so this is compressive strength and its tensile strength is 10 percent which is 10 newton per millimeter square now its tensile strength is normally ignored we rely on its compressive strength how do we take advantage of this material with all its drawbacks or shortcomings there is no such thing as ideal material in this world this material has got its shortcomings but 
we have a way to improve those shortcomings. And the way is that the tensile strength of concrete is normally ignored when we are designing a concrete beam. And as such, we provide a reinforcement at the bottom of the beam where it will experience high tension. Remember that if you're bending a beam, it will have tension at the bottom and compression at the top. And I'm talking about a simply supported beam here. Another disadvantage is low ductility, which means that it is a brittle material, so it will fail suddenly. Now, how can we improve this? The way to improve this is to add reinforcement. So with re reinforcement, it becomes relatively ductile. It's not as ductile as steel. By ductility, I mean that if you have load, load versus deflection or stress versus strength, so brittle material will go up and then it will quickly go down. A ductile material, on the other hand, will go up, then come down. So it will have sufficient deformation before it fails giving us a warning. So concrete in itself is a brittle material. It has got low ductility and it's got low strength to weight ratio as well. And steel has got, on the other hand, high strength to weight ratio. What do we mean by concrete? Concrete comprises of the three main ingredients, cement, water, and aggregates. Aggregates are again divided into two categories, fine aggregates, which is sand, and coarse aggregate, which is some kind of boulders or something, and admixtures. So most of the part, 60 to 80 percent of the mix is aggregates, then about 10 percent of water, 10 percent of cement. Now, slump test, it is the ease with which concrete can flow, which means that it is the test for workability. The less water we have in concrete, the stronger it becomes, but it cannot flow inside the reinforcement. So that's the reason we prefer to have a balanced water cement ratio so that it has at least some kind of slump. And slump means that you pour concrete in a cone and then you lift the cone and see how much concrete has dropped. So if it drops more, then it means that it has got more slump and it is workable. If it drops less, it means that it has got less water and it is less workable. The slump cone is filled in three layers and each layer is rotted 25 times. And then these are the dimensions, 30 centimeter high and 10 centimeter wide at the top. Now, it is determined as the vertical difference between the top of the mold and the displaced concrete. So this value is going to give you slump. Now, this is the process how it's done. Sample is collected and then the slump cone is filled in this next one. And then cone is removed and concrete is allowed to slump. And then we measure a slump. It's as simple as that. And then we measure the slump to test the flowability of concrete, to test the workability of concrete. Now, how do we determine compressive strength? I'm sure you would have done it in materials at level four. Compressive strength of concrete as concrete is very strong in compression. This is one of the benefit of concrete and it's very low in tension, almost negligible. I mean, we do not really consider the tensile strength of concrete. You can see that these cubes and cylinders, they, they are filled. So now here you can see these are cubes. In previous British codes, we used to use cubes, but new Euro code, they rely more on these cylinders. Now, what is reinforced concrete? So this was simply concrete where we have cement, water and aggregates. We mix them up and we produce some kind of paste uh, that is concrete. By reinforced concrete, it means that we use some kind of reinforcement. So reinforced concrete is a composite material where we introduce steel bars inside the concrete beam or concrete column or anything. And the benefit is that it takes into account the shortcomings of concrete. The shortcomings are that it's very weak in tension. So steel reinforcement, it takes care of tension, resulting in a very strong and durable material. And the complementary properties are that concrete has high compressive strength and low tensile strength, I already mentioned. 
steel bars can resist tensile forces but will buckle under relatively low compressive stresses but that buckling is not a major issue now steel bars are provided in zones where concrete is subjected to high tensile stresses to provide material strong compression and tension we use a steel bars where it is necessary in tension yes it is compulsory that we use steel bars in compression we don't use steel bars at all but to hang those stirrups or rings sometimes we use hanger bars at the top but they are not the critical ones the concrete also provides corrosion protection and fire resistance to steel bars that's the main thing thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe for more practical insights into structural engineering and beyond until next time stay curious